Hey guys, welcome to Celia's Playlist. I am here today with David Baldwin. He's one of the guitar players and singers from the Gumbies, and I am so excited to be here with you today, David. How's it going? Hey, so good to see you. Thanks for Hi, having it's, me. I, I'm, I'm excited to have you. It's not like we were talking before we hopped on here. Like, not you know, at all. This is the first time I've ever heard your voice. <laughs> it's, a cold, it's a cold open, as we call it. I know, right? So yeah. David, tell me a little bit about your background and uh, you know about the Gumbies as a band. Yeah, so the Gumbies are uh, myself and my uh, writing partner, James Thompson, who lives in Colorado. I actually live in Raleigh, North Carolina. We were in a band back in 1980, believe it or not, that was called Jet. Not that Jet, but it was called Jet. And um, we, you know, were on the road doing the whole thing. Uh, the band broke up because one of the guys wanted to go to music school. And uh, and the, the, just as happens, the band broke up. So my, my friend James and I said, why don't we start a three-piece called the Gumbies? And this is, again, this is in probably 1981. And we ended up not doing it. I ended up leaving and going to school. And, uh, and then I ended up getting into advertising and playing music on the side the whole time and was part of the early Austin scene, what I would call early Austin scene, early 80s anyway. And, uh, and then um, we got together about three years ago and said, hey, we never did the Gumbies. Let's do it. And so we did it. We started doing it. But again, it's all of the challenges and advantages of what you can do today because we don't live in the same city. So we're doing a lot of virtual stuff. We write together over Zoom. Um, and then we, you know, exchange ideas via, via our, our iPhones and recording on things. And then James will come in and we'll play. We'll uh, go into a studio. Uh, we're not doing a home recording for the most part. We'll do demos, um, home demos. And then James comes in, we we do all of his parts. And then when he leaves, I do all of my parts. And, and then we... Uh, we put the music out. So I just uploaded a, a song right before this call. So that comes out on March 8th. So that's really cool. I, I feel like that's a different approach to music that you kind of have to like work around because you guys aren't exactly in the same place. I feel like a lot of people, um, you know, collaborate by, by jamming or collaborate by yeah. like writing together. Yeah. How does that affect your process? It's the, it, it, I, that is the best question because we, we really, we both miss that a lot. Um, and that's some you can kind of do it on on Zoom. But what we have found is that we'll throw to, I'll throw together just like a really quick demo on a quick, literally a quick time of me singing it. And, and I send it to him and then he kind of adds his stuff and sends me a, a, a recording back. He tends to get into a DAW and do more finished stuff than I do. And then I'll come in and go, I don't you know, what I think it needs a bridge or something, you know, and so we'll 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 kind of do it that way but it, it's really we've sat down together in the same room and written twice in three years and most of it is exchanging ideas virtually which is also um i will say there's a remove to that that is freeing as well because you don't have that um what's missing is the kind of kinetic energy of it what's also there is there's a more relaxed collaboration where you get to process something versus just reacting to it you know and uh, so I'll hear something and three days later go, you know what I think that needs? Whereas sometimes when you're just sitting in the same room, it's you, you go, you're going really fast, you know? And so I, I, it, there's an advantage to, to, to both things, but we both miss just sitting and sort of jamming and going like, hey, here's an idea, let's develop it for an hour. We don't really, we're not able to do that. I like the concept of like being able to sit on something because yeah. I'm, I'm working on a promotional campaign right now and I'm editing as the campaign is going on. Yeah. But as we're going, I'm, I'm noticing things and being like, you know what? It would be cool if we did this. Yeah. So I, I feel like that's where you have a little extra finesse because you, you yeah. can actually like sit on something and you'd be like, oh, we need a little bit of a guitar part here. Or yeah. it would be really yeah. cool if we threw in like a little like, I don't know keys or a sound effect or something in the background over in this part, like it allows you to have a different kind of creativity in a way. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I, and I also think like there, there's always that um, tension between what you're talking about and like something getting overcooked. Right. And so you do need a deadline. Like I find deadlines to be so motivating and helpful of like, this has to be done by then. Because I think one of the things that I learned in my sort of advertising and design career is you've got to be you've got to learn to be done at a certain time and to be done means you have to have it done well yeah. right and so you have to you have to that's a muscle that you have to sort of build and and when you're when you don't ever have a deadline you, you don't have to build that muscle and so that's something that we're pretty comfortable with i feel like that immediacy like not not from like having a dead, deadline but like working towards something yeah 
uh, is something that a lot of people have kind of voiced to me, um, at, like, you know, musicians, because they they want to work on it till it's perfect. But when yeah. is it perfect? When do, yeah. What does that mean? Because And that's one of the things that I've seen hold a couple of people back because yeah. they're like, oh, it's not done. Well, I've why seen is it, it as why well. is it not done? Yeah, I've seen it as well. And then you'll hear it and go, wow, it's great. And they're like, yeah, but I don't have this one thing. You know, and you're like, you need to get this done. I, I, I as a creative person, I believe, you know, uh, constraint is your friend. So I agree. Yeah. I feel like for me, like, I, obviously, I, I, I'm in a whole different side of the creative field. But like, you know, at, at first, I would work until something was perfect. And now I had to, yeah. like, fix my standard towards having like a different, uh, you know, idea of what perfection is. Yeah. Because if you're working towards perfect, you know, you're, you're going to be looking at every single frame of every single video that you're ever yeah. doing instead yeah, of making editing, sure right? you capture everything in, in, in like more of a like whole picture kind of way, if that makes no, sense. I think as you're long as you're getting right. the story and you're getting everything, like yeah. it's better to get it out than have it sit on your computer forever. You know what I think is a kind of an interesting metaphor is a, a diamond. Like you can have you can have a diamond that's that's this big or you can have a diamond that's tiny, but they can both be perfect. Right. And, and like the idea of perfection in a diamond, like it's not about the size of it. It's about where it is when you, you know, OK, I have the size. I have to make this thing perfect for what it is. But it doesn't mean and I think when you're talking about editing, man, you're talking about choices like and every choice you make affects every other choice you make. And it's a it's even a little different than music. Like you make this choice. You can't go back and change it without changing everything. Right. That's fair. It's all about it's storytelling. And yeah. that's where like, you know, the crossover between editing and like, you know, creating what I create and creating what, you, what, what you create, uh, you know, yeah. comes together. So yeah, uh, I want to, you know, jump back. You said that you, uh, you know, you you have a background in advertising. Yeah. But, um, you know, with the change in landscape on online now, like what was it like coming back afterwards and being like, all right, now I have to promote a band? Well, I think that, you know, I, I, I feel like we're we've been together doing this for three years now. We're in our third year and I feel like we're still preparing sort of the brand. I keep I keep thinking of our, ourselves as a rock brand, you know, like and and so what what does that look like? And I'm using all of the tools that I have and finding that, wow, I don't I don't actually um, I don't have all the questions answered that I need to answer. We're going to still keep putting music out and we have a lot of things that we're doing and, and doing out. But I think where what we're missing is kind of the 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 roadmap plan, you know, and I'm and I I know how to do that. I mean, that's something I know how to do. But I was saying to you earlier, like it's physician heal thyself. It's harder to do it for yourself than it is for somebody else. Right. A hundred percent. I have been working on my own brand and like I've jumped around so many times. People have seen me do different shows, different whatever. But I feel like I finally like for myself figured it out. Yeah. It's so much easier for someone to be like, here's the details. And then me go, OK, all right, we got this. All right. So yeah. it's this, 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 this. And if you want to get here, these are your four steps to get there. Yeah. So I, I totally understand that. And it, yeah. I feel like it's because there's so much in your head that you need to get out of your head to be able to yeah. do that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. especially when it, when it's that close and, uh, you know, that personal of a project, it, it, it could be a barrier between you even posting about anything. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think, I think that that leads me to the question for us, like what, what are we posting? Are we posting about our music? Are we posting about ourselves as musicians and songwriters? Are we post, am I posting myself as a guitar player? I was, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away by the level of guitar playing online on the internet. Like some of these bedroom players are astoundingly skilled and I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, I'm a good, I'm a, I'm what I'd call a decently good guitar player, you know, but uh, like it, it's, there's so many questions of like, well, what do we, what do we do? And you just want to show up authentically really. But, oh, yeah. Right. But that's, those are the questions we're trying to figure out. And, and then I, I, We'll also say we're trying to figure out if we should even show ourselves as humans because we're both older guys. We're both, you know, we're I feel like there's a lot of different directions that you need to do, uh, yeah. not to do, but like to, to take into consideration. Yeah. But you can also just figure out who the audience you want to play to is yeah. and then, you know, work backwards from there. Yeah. With that being said, though, I know that you have more of like a 70s, 80s sound, like, yeah. you know, yep. uh, what yeah. what uh, like 
I know that that was when you guys uh, first started kind of the Gumby's idea. But yeah. um, what inspired you to continue that sound now? Well, I, you know, I am I am the I am what the opposite of a musical snob. Like I love everything. I really do. There's certain things I don't like, of course. But I mean, I just am not a snob about music. And um, I I've always just loved guitar based rock and roll, really. I mean, it's really what it is. And so when I think about what I can add and what I'm good at, it's really that, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's doing guitar, you know, guitar based stuff. And my uh, fellow Gumbite, uh, Gumbyite James is the same. Like we're both, you know, he's a multi instrumentalist, so he he really makes everything tick. I mean, he's the one who pl he plays drums, he plays bass. He, you know, we, we both we're two lead singer band, which is weird, you know, so depending on who's singing, we sound a little we don't always sound like the same band, I think. but. But we really love that kind of uh, mid 70s to mid 80s like that. We're, we're always in there somewhere, you know, and we, we put a song out last year called Queen of California, which it's so funny because we it's called Queen of California. And we put it out and went, oh, God, there's a song by John Mayer called Queen of California. So and uh, our engineer who we work with said, hey, there's a million heartbreakers out there. So don't worry about it. But, um, you know, it, it's kind of like a country, almost like a country rock song you know it almost sounds like it's a la 1977 kind of country thing so and then sometimes it we're a little more almost like on the kind of leaning into punk or or into cheap trick there's a lot of colors to what we're doing but it's very specifically like contained within an era you know i like that you have the diversity in there because it allows you room to grow as an artist as well yeah yeah. And I think that it's really interesting that you guys have multiple singers in this because I feel like people define like, you know, bands by like things that they expect to hear. And yeah. I like that you're you're breaking the expectation, but like in a, in a way that everyone's going to enjoy. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. It's funny what, what we what we say a lot is we want to feel both of the singers in every song, even if the other singers, even if, if James is singing something, we want to feel me in it and vice versa. And so we work really hard to do that. I don't know if we're successful, but we work really hard to do that. So, well, I mean, you know, the, the audience will have to tell us, uh, yeah, how they, how they, sure. uh, how they notice that, uh, yeah, if sure. you had to pick one song of yours that would, uh, encapsulate your project as a whole, what song would that be? Um, I think, I think it would be either queen of California or a song called falling star, um, which, uh, which is mostly a James song. I just kind of added in a little bit here and there. That was mostly him. But um, I think those are really where we've reached the higher, the highest. We that I feel like those songs we kind of hit what we were trying to hit. You know. I feel yeah. you. So I have like this big question that I keep asking everyone, and yeah. that question is: if if someone was starting to get into creating music now, what would be your advice to them? I I think don't worry about the outcome so much as the process and don't get hung up on um don't go, don't get hung up on the the sort of fame i'm gonna call it the word fame i don't know what that means anymore but the the sort of you know my my, I'll, my daughter is a is a songwriter in los angeles and she's incredible she's really good and the stuff that she has to deal with compared to what i had to deal with when i was starting which was Put a band together, go out and play, try to get some renown through your shows and your recording and your you know live performance. You know, she has to be good at TikTok and she has to be good at all sorts of things. So her music is, is unassailably great. It's incredible. She's got a great voice and she's incredible. But um, I think, you know, you, you ha I think authenticity is kind of the more important thing you should be aiming for is are you you and how do you use you across all those platforms? That's what I would say. And that's the question we're wrestling with ourselves right now. I feel like that's an industry question right now. And yeah. that's the thing that a lot of people are trying to figure out because it like everyone's trying to figure out, all right, well, I need to get this song out there. But now I'm a musician that needs to turn into a content creator. Yeah, like essentially right. exactly right. So that's been something that I've noticed. And like, you know, people have been coming to me like even before I was talking on the Internet because they see that I was creating content because I was a content creator before I was like working in. And you're in good all at of it. my you're, things. You're Thank quite you. good at it. Yeah, it's it's a lot of practice. And yeah. uh, just like, you know, practicing a song, you have to practice how you're going to carry yourself on the Internet and you're going to have to practice yeah. like how to create. So, um, you know, it's 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 an ever growing process being an artist of any kind, I guess. 
Yeah. Well, it's interesting. The music's the easy part, I think, for what we're trying to figure out, right? The music is not the, it, we don't ever have questions about how we're going to do that. It's more like, okay, now what, you know? I understand. I've had like a, a number of different artists come across my, my desk in, in, in time. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's also the question of, do I do a music video? Do I do content? What does a promotional campaign actually mean? Or what does that actually look like? Yeah. Because, you know, when you're, when you're learning how to be an artist, you're learning how to play an instrument. You're learning how to uh, apply things like music theory, but you're yeah. not learning how to you know, understand how to carry yourself on camera. You're not right. getting like media training. You're not getting all of these things. And, um, you know, it, it's becoming more evident because it's becoming more of a deterrent for local artists and independent yeah. artists to make that jump because of the, the content. Yeah. And I think it's really hard to make money as a younger artist. It's very difficult to make a living um, doing it, I think. So that's a, and I think it always has been, I just think it's worse now. Yeah, I, I have a, a number of friends that are doing it and I respect the hell out of them for doing yeah. it. And, yeah. um, you know, I'm very proud of them. Yeah. But, um, you know, we're coming towards the end of the interview. Yeah. And, uh, you know, David, where where can people find your music and where can they find you guys? Yeah, so we're, we're on all the platforms, of course. But, you know, go to Spotify and, and type in the Gumbies. And uh, if you, uh, it, you know, t uh, type in uh, uh, Falling Star the Gumbies and you'll, you'll get to us and you can click on our artist. But we're on everything. We're on Tidal. We're on all the places. So awesome. I had such a good time with you on this interview. I wish that like, you know, I scheduled more times. So Those <laughs> would be longer interviews. But yeah. um, I appreciate you taking the time to sit down with me today. And um, I will be back on the next interview. So it was uh, great you. seeing the interview people. Uh, you know, Thank you. It was a real everyone. pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. And uh, I will be back on the next one. Bye, guys. Okay.